Wages and prices often play leapfrog. One jumps up, then the other, which means a steady rise in our cost of living. The Dilly Doll Factory is a happy shop. But Joe, our doll painter friend, seems to be a little down in the mouth, which even shows in his work. Joe is pretty discouraged because the high cost of living makes it harder and harder to make ends meet. Hiya, Joe, old boy. Hello. Better look in that envelope. Wow, a race! And just in time to buy the kid a birthday present. What'll I get? Let's see. Dress? Eh. Bicycle? Roller skate? Shoes? A book? A doll? A doll! What's the price, miss? I work in a factory that makes this doll. Two bucks is too much. I'm very sorry, sir, but your company charged us more for this shipment, so we had to raise our selling price. Well, we got a wage increase, all right, but it couldn't raise the price that much. It just takes a little wood, rubber, paint, cloth, and a phony wig to make that doll. There's only about 10 cents worth of materials in the whole thing. You pirates, crooks, bandits, you, you robbers. You're right about the cost of raw materials in that doll, about 10 cents worth. Raw materials in practically everything we buy are worth little until labor transforms them into finished products. For example, how much do you think the raw materials cost in that car? Oh, about 300 bucks. You've got a surprise coming. It takes four and a half tons of coal, two and three quarters tons of iron ore, 50 pounds of cotton, 14 pounds of cured and finished wool, aluminum, zinc, lead, copper, and countless other raw materials to make an automobile. Without the addition of labor costs, these things are worth about $22. The raw materials require the accumulated labor of thousands of people in countless crafts to transform them into a finished automobile. Miners dig the coal and iron ore. Railroad and maritime workers transport these materials to the steel mill, where workers convert the ore into finished steel. The wages of railroad workers add to the value of steel when it is transported to automobile factories. The cotton that goes into a car accumulates labor costs from the farmer who tills the soil, from workers who sow the seed, and help to raise the cotton. Wages paid to other workers add to the value of the cotton as it is moved from the field to the cotton gin where it is processed. Other workers transport the cotton to the automobile factory. The wool that is used to make a car is worth little while it is still on the sheep. When the labor cost of a sheep shearer is added, the value of the wool is increased by his wages. When all of the parts and materials finally reach the factory for assembly, the labor cost of automobile workers must be added to the price of the car. In the $1,500 automobile, direct and indirect labor costs add up to approximately $1,200, or 
or over 80% of the selling price. That's before taxes. And what happens to the other 20% or $300? Raw material cost, $22. Profit to producers of raw materials and allied industries, $89. Profit to part manufacturers, $47. Profit to local dealer, $77. Profit to car manufacturer, $65. Now, when you add $400 for taxes, the cost is $1,900 to the buyer. Like the dolls you make, an automobile has a low raw material cost and a high labor cost, and that goes for practically everything we buy. Oh, yeah? Well, what's the labor cost in a buck's worth of steak? We'll start back at the farm where Bully Boy was raised. The selling price of meat has to include the labor cost in producing the feed, in building fences, and constructing housing for our animal friend. It takes a lot of costly care to get Bully Boy ready for the market. Wages have to be paid to railroad workers who provide our friend with care and courtesy on his way to the stockyard. Preparing Bully Boy's anatomy for the butcher shop costs money, too. The family butcher figures in his wages every time he sells a thick, juicy steak. Forgetting taxes for a moment, the labor cost in a dollar's worth of meat adds up like this. Workers raising beef, 24 cents. Transportation workers, one half cent. Packing house workers, 42 cents. Meat delivery drivers, one half cent. Butcher shop workers, 18 cents. The other 15 cents goes in profits to the retailers, the packers, Allied Industries, and to the farmers and ranchers. Most of the things we buy accumulate direct and indirect labor costs that add up to 85% of the selling price before taxes are added. Generally speaking, a wage raise means a corresponding rise in prices unless productivity is increased proportionately. What do you want, a guy with four arms? Four arms? <laughs> Say, I got a sensational idea. To expand productivity, labor and management must work together to develop new ideas and techniques. To expand productivity, capital must finance the creation of more efficient tools and plants. The production of more and better goods at lower costs means that when you get a wage raise, it's a real raise. A raise? A raise? I want to buy a doll. How much? Now you've got a real wage raise because you can buy more with what you earn. With increased productivity, wages can keep ahead of prices. <laughs> <laughs>